Summer is just around the corner, so I wanted to share some dermatologist approved skincare tips to help you with any skin issues that may arise. Hey, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Tip number one, wear sunscreen daily. You might be so sick of hearing dermatologists talk about this, but we talk about it for a reason. The effects of the sun on the skin are tremendous. It contributes to premature skin aging as well as skin cancer. And both of those things are so preventable with sun protection. Of course, the threat of UV radiation tends to be higher in the summer because we're doing more outdoor activities, the days are longer, we might be doing things like swimming, so more of our skin is exposed, and so sun protection becomes even more important. Now, a lot of times when I talk about wearing sunscreen every single day, there will always be a few DMs or a few comments that say, well, what if I'm staying inside all day and I'm not near windows? All right, it's called sunscreen. So if you're not exposed to the sun, like, yeah, you don't need to have sunscreen on. But if you just put it on every morning, then at least you have some degree of protection. So if you go outside and you weren't expecting to, or you run a quick errand, you have a little bit of protection. Of course, I would love you to reapply your sunscreen before you go outside. But if you get in the habit of putting it on every single morning, it will still afford you some protection throughout the entire day. Another question I'll often get is, well, do I need to wear sunscreen if it's cloudy outside? And that really depends on how cloudy it is, what time of day it is. I think one of the easiest things you can do is check the UV index in the area that you are at the time that you plan to be outside. So usually within the weather app on your phone, you're able to check what the UV index is. And I typically say if the UV index is three or higher, you should have sunscreen on. Now, if the UV index is pretty low, like zero to two, you're still gonna be getting a little bit of UV radiation exposure. It's probably not enough to cause a sunburn, but all those little bits of UV exposure over your lifetime do lead to cumulative damage. So if you just wanna do the most in terms of sun protection, put your sunscreen on regardless. This sort of leads me to tip number two, which is reapply your sunscreen after swimming or sweating. What do you hear all the time when it comes to sunscreen reapplication? Reapply every two hours, reapply every two hours. But what that recommendation doesn't take into consideration is if your sunscreen barrier or that film that it's formed on your skin is disrupted prior to the two hour mark. This often happens if you're swimming or sweating because water itself can disrupt sunscreen, but also towel drying, that frictional component really can can take your sunscreen off and can make you vulnerable to UV radiation that you may think you're still protected from. Fortunately, they do manufacture sunscreens with water resistance, and those typically offer somewhere between 40 and 80 minutes of water resistance, meaning that if you put the proper amount of sunscreen on, you allow it to set up on your skin appropriately, and you get in the water, you should be relatively well protected for the amount of time that's listed on the sunscreen label. Here's the caveat though. Say you apply sunscreen that offers 40 minutes of water resistance, you get in the pool for 20 minutes, you get out, you towel dry off, off, you might be thinking, okay, great. I was only in the pool for 20 minutes. I have at least 20 more minutes of sun protection from this sunscreen. No, you don't because you towel dried off and effectively removed that sunscreen barrier. So you are vulnerable again and you need to reapply. Is that annoying to do? Yes, but is that important to do? Also, yes. Every time I travel to a sunny place, everywhere I look are people with sunburns and the sunburns are often kind of splotchy. And I think a lot of people assume that happens because in the initial application of sunscreen or lack of sunscreen, some spots were missed. But what I think happens more often is that people do a pretty good job of putting sunscreen on the first time, but they don't take into consideration that their clothing or their towels may be rubbing some of that sunscreen off. And so those are the areas where they get more burnt. Nonetheless, I do think water resistant sunscreens are worth it if you're doing activities where you are sweating or you are swimming or exposed to water in other ways because they do form a little bit more of a film on the skin and are less susceptible to casual frictional forces. I do have a few favorite water resistant sunscreens. My number one holy grail for this is by a company called EV Technology. It's a Swedish sunscreen company, so it can be a little tricky to get their sunscreens in the United States, but they are incredible. When you spray these out of the bottle, they actually come out as a foam. But what I really like about these sunscreens is that they are super water resistant. So they give the typical 80 minutes of water resistance, but then they've also done some additional testing to show that after eight hours of intermittent water exposure, the sunscreen still remains relatively intact and still protective. Now, of course, I'm going to reapply this sunscreen more frequently than every eight hours, but it does just give me a little added peace of mind that these are super, super protective. Another water resistant sunscreen that I really, really like and is a little easier to get your hands on in the United States is Elta MD, the UV Sport. It's SPF 50. This 
This is a hybrid sunscreen that uses zinc oxide as well as some chemical UV filters to give you excellent protection. I'm also a really big fan of the La Roche-Posay Melt in Milk. This is an SPF 60 chemical sunscreen meant for face and body. I love how moisturizing this sunscreen is, but it's not greasy at all and it absorbs really quickly. And because it's sort of designed to be used on the face and body, I just feel like it looks so good on the skin. And it's one that I like to bring on vacation a lot for that reason. My third summer skincare tip is wear a hat and sunglasses and maybe get your hands on some UPF clothing. As much as I love sunscreen, it's not perfect. So having other forms of UV protection is great. The other thing is that I don't personally enjoy applying sunscreen from head to toe and repeating that process every two hours or even more frequently than that, depending on what I'm doing. So I really like to rely on UV protective clothing, wide brim hats, sunglasses, etc., so that I don't have to apply sunscreen to every square inch of my body. When it comes to sun protective clothing, you don't have to look for a UPF label. UPF stands for UV protection factor and something that has a UV protection factor of 50 is blocking 98% of UV radiation from reaching your skin. A UPF label is helpful because it does give you some peace of mind, but there are plenty of other types of clothing that block most UV radiation that don't necessarily have that label. For example, think of a denim jacket or a pair of dark, tightly woven leggings. You're not getting sunburned through those. I think one of the easiest ways to tell if something's going to expose you to too much UV radiation is to hold it up to the light. And if you don't see a lot of light passing through that clothing item, that typically means that the weave is tight enough to block most UV radiation. The benefit of getting specific UPF clothing is that these are often designed with outdoor activities, sweating, hot weather, all in mind. So you usually can get something that's quite lightweight, but still gives you a lot of protection. I could probably do an entire YouTube video just on UPF clothing and hats, but some items that really come to mind are the Athleta Sun Chaser top. This is a great athletic top if you like to do things outdoors when it's sunny outside. I also really love the Coolie Bar gloves. I personally wear those when I am driving so they don't get a lot of sun exposure on the back of my hands, but it's great if you're like out there walking the golf course or whatever you might be doing, watching your kid at swim meets and you need sun protection on your hands because that's an area that's often neglected. Target also has a clothing line called All in Motion and many of those items offer UV protection. And then when it comes to hats, it's just such a matter of personal style and how you're going to be wearing the hat. I think investing in a hat that you really love is so worth it. I have so many hats because I just want one for every single occasion. I really think Free People has a really nice variety of wide brim hats that are relatively affordable, but are also functional and fashionable. If you have a sun hat that you love or a piece of UPF clothing that you think is awesome, definitely put it in the comments below because I wanna know about it. Tip number four, stay in the shade. This is going to reduce your chance of sunburn and heat stroke. Ideally, you're seeking shade in peak sun hours, which are typically between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., but I also understand that that's when a lot of the fun things happen. So stand in the shade when you can, and then if you need to be in sun for short periods of time, and that's okay. Now, if you do slip up and you get a sunburn, that's okay, it does happen to people. I have an entire YouTube video dedicated to teaching you how to treat a sunburn, but I do think it's nice to just have sort of a sunscreen survival kit. If you do get a sunburn, the last thing you're going to be in the mood to do is go to the drugstore and pick up all the things you need. So I recommend having some ibuprofen on hand as well as 1% hydrocortisone because that can be really helpful with itch. Some people love to use aloe vera, there's not much efficacy to it, but it can feel nice if you keep it in the fridge and apply it. But the main things are going to be keeping hydrated and keeping yourself comfortable. Tip number five, wear insect repellent or bug spray if you're going to be in an area where you are exposed to mosquitoes or ticks. I would say the gold standard ingredient when it comes to insect repellents is DEET, but a lot of people don't like to use DEET for a variety of reasons. One, it just feels pretty gross on the skin and has a pretty intense smell. So there's another ingredient called picaridin that's just as effective and you can find it in most bug sprays. There are also other active ingredients that can help repel mosquitoes and ticks, and you can find those on the CDC website. I can put some of my bug spray recommendations in the description box below. The thing to keep in mind is you only want to apply bug spray to exposed skin. So you don't wanna put it on and then cover that skin up. The other thing is if you are wearing sunscreen and bug spray, which if you are outdoors and it's sunny outside, you should be wearing both. You wanna put your sunscreen on first and then put your insect repellent on top. Tip number six for summer skincare is rinse off your sweat, your chlorine, your sunscreen, etc., sooner rather than later. I feel like in the summer, especially, we are much more prone to sitting around in our sweaty clothing, in our wet bathing suit, and not really rinsing things off or taking our wet clothing off. But that can really increase your risk of just general irritation, as well as acne, fungal infections, yeast infections, all the things you really probably don't want. Whenever I go to a pool party or the beach, gosh, that makes me sound like a seven-year-old, but I usually bring a couple of swimsuits. One 
one to wear in the water and then one to change into afterward because oftentimes I still want to be hanging out in my bathing suit, but I don't want to be hanging out in a wet bathing suit marinating. So when I get out of the pool and I know I'm going to be out of the pool for a while, I'll just change into the dry swimsuit so that I can still be in the appropriate attire, but a lot more comfortable. Tip number seven, exfoliate your skin but with caution. When we think about exfoliating our skin, whether that's with a scrub or with a chemical exfoliant, what we're really thinking about is removing some of the outer dead skin cell layer called the stratum corneum. Exfoliation can be great because it can make the skin less dull and appear more vibrant, but the drawback to it is when you remove some of that stratum corneum, you're actually removing some of the protective layer of the skin and it essentially makes the skin more susceptible to UV radiation. Now exfoliating and removing some degree of the stratum corneum isn't so dangerous for your skin that I would advise you to never do it. But what I would advise is that if you are regularly exfoliating your skin, no matter what method you are using, that you're also protecting your skin properly from the sun. And of course this becomes more of an issue in the summer when you have more UV exposure. If you own any products that contain alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid or lactic acid or use something with salicylic acid, you may have read on the packaging of your skincare product warning this increases your risk of sunburn, et cetera, et cetera. So on the packaging, it already is warning you about that. And that is for good reason. So when I'm thinking about exfoliating during the summer, I'm actually thinking about exfoliating after I've had sun exposure, not before. So for example, if I'm going on vacation next week. I'm not going to do a ton of exfoliation right before I go on a sunny vacation because it's going to leave my skin more susceptible. But when I get home from the vacation, maybe I've been applying more sunscreen than I normally do. I've maybe had some disruptions to my routine. So my skin's feeling a little bit congested or just a little bit icky. That's when I will exfoliate more. So after the sun exposure, not before. I definitely have some exfoliant recommendations. I would say my all time favorite physical exfoliant. So my favorite scrub is by Tatcha, it's their rice polish. And I feel like it's a little bit of a no-no for dermatologists to say, ooh, I like a physical exfoliation, but sometimes I'm just craving the tiniest bit of grit on my skin. And I want my skin to feel a little bit polished. And this one is so incredibly gentle. And then it sort of melts down into this cleansing foam. It's so perfect. It takes forever for me to go through a bottle of it. I leave it in my shower. I do it maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks, but it is gorgeous. And then one of my favorite chemical exfoliants, I've already spoken about it so much on this channel is the Sunday Riley Good Jeans, the all-in-one lactic acid treatment. They also have one that's glycolic acid, but the nice thing about the lactic acid one is it's just a little bit more gentle and a little bit goes a long way. I used this throughout my pregnancy when I couldn't use my retinoids, but I still wanted my skin to have this really beautiful glow. And this would be one that I would feel okay using over the summer as long as I was really good with my sun protection. Speaking of retinoids, tip number eight, you do not need to stop your topical retinoid during the summer. I didn't even know this was a thing people did, like using their topical retinoid seasonally until I got on Instagram and people were sending me DMs the first year that I had an account being like, ooh, summer's coming up, what can I use instead of my retinoid? And I was like, use instead of your retinoid, why are you stopping it? But I think there's a really common misconception that retinoids make you more sun sensitive. That is just, it's not true. Yes, some people when they're using a retinoid have more sensitive skin and they might notice a little more rosiness to their cheeks, but it actually is not making you more sensitive to the sun. At least that's what the data shows. But of course, every person is different. So if you feel like your retinoid does make you more sun sensitive, then sure, skip it during the sunny months. That's totally fine. But I feel like a lot of people stop their retinoid unnecessarily because of this fear of sun sensitivity that's not really a reality. Even though retinoids don't make you more sun sensitive, you still should pair your retinoid use with good sun protection, namely sunscreen, because if you're using your retinoid for anti-aging purposes or acne purposes, pairing that with good sun protection is going to give you better results. Tip number nine, moisturize daily, but consider swapping out your richer moisturizers for lighter textures. Of course, summer is hotter. It may also be more humid and some of those richer, thicker moisturizers sort of lose their appeal. That being said, it's still really important to moisturize your skin. And I find myself reaching for things like gel creams or even just hydrating serums to use under my sunscreen. When it comes to lighter products, I love the Aveeno Oat Gel Moisturizer. This is just such a beautiful, lightweight gel moisturizer you put it on under sunscreen, or you can use it at night after you've cleansed your face and applied any other serums or treatments that you want to use. But one, I love that it's drugstore, so it's relatively affordable. But two, I just feel like it makes your skin feel so supported and nourished without it feeling greasy or heavy or weighed down. I'm also really obsessed with the Summer Fridays Dream Oasis Deep Hydration Serum. I do advise for Summer Fridays, and I don't know if I've ever talked about this 
serum or this product on this channel before, but it is so special. It is this really lightweight, milky serum. It is so hydrating. It layers beautifully under sunscreen. It is probably one of my favorite summer skincare products ever. And then when it comes to body skincare and body moisturizers, again, I don't always want like a thick, creamy moisturizer, especially if it's humid outside. Like you get out of the shower, you try to put your lotion on and then you're like, immediately sticky and sweating, no thank you. But Necessaire makes a hyaluronic acid-based body serum that is so easy to apply. You can apply it even when your skin is still damp and it gives a great hydration, moisturizing effect without feeling sticky. And my final summer skincare tip is to avoid tanning beds. You do not need a base tan. You do not need to get like a little tan to get your skin ready for summer. No, no amount of tan is considered a healthy tan because when your skin tans, that is its way of trying to protect itself. And it's a way of showing like, hey, I'm being damaged by UV radiation here. That's why I'm tanning. So if you develop a tan, you've technically damaged your skin. Now, of course, I understand that depending on what your background is, what your genetics are, you're going to be more prone to tanning than other people, but do not seek out additional tanning in a tanning bed. If you do like your skin to look a little bit more bronzy, then I recommend using some type of self tanning product that does not require use of the sun. And if you want self tanning recommendations, I have an entire YouTube video dedicated to not only only the technique of self tanning, like how to get a flawless application, but also some of the products that I love to use myself. Do you have any summer skincare tips to add? Make sure to share them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and being here. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.